Hello everyone, my name is Luke Elijah. Thank you so much for watching this video. With me is my special guest, the lovely Melissa, who is the founder of the Wellness Insider as well as the Kombucha Chronicles. Thank you, Melissa, for coming onto my talk show and sharing your expertise Thank you with for my me. audience. <laughs> right. Could you tell the audience a little bit about yourself as well as what is kombucha? Sure. So I'm the founder of the Wellness Insider, as Luke has kindly mentioned, which is a platform where we promote body confidence through expert opinions on diet, fitness, lifestyle, as well as beauty. So how I got into kombucha is because it is part of what the Wellness Insider is about health, mm. right, overall. Health is a real wealth as well, don't exactly. forget. Exactly. Yeah. So why do people drink kombucha and what is this whole thing about? Kombucha really is fermented tea and why we drink it is because it's full of probiotics. Then your next question would be what the heck are probiotics? <laughs> <laughs> it is bacteria. Sounds gross but actually your gut really needs all these good bacteria which are your probiotics. And there is more and more research going on right now that shows that your overall health is related to your guts. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Because especially most people don't really know that uh, the gut produces more than 70% of the body's overall uh, hormone, serotonin. Right? Yeah. So if, if it's mostly produced in the gut, then you want to make sure that your gut health is taken yes. care of. And what better way than to ingest tasty probiotics in the form of kombucha, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. And of course, this is not the only form of probiotics. There are other ways that you can consume probiotics, such as kimchi, yogurt, um, sauerkraut, sauerkraut mm. basically fermented stuff, yeah. right? So this is fermented tea, and it's fermented by what we call a SCOBY. Sounds very funky, but it's an acronym for Symbiotic Colony of Bacteria and Yeast. Yeah. <laughs> so the way I treat this drink is a lot like how a lot of people treat beer and alcohol mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because there is a brewing process, there is yeast involved, so naturally there is about 1% of alcohol produced in what you're going to taste yes. today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, okay. What if someone says, I don't want, uh, I, I'm maybe I'm Muslim or I'm kosher or like, you know, uh, I want some, or I'm allergic to alcohol, I don't want that alcohol. Is it? Um, when they still be able to ingest kombucha? Okay, there are a lot of questions in that, <laughs> in that one question. Let me go break it down one by one. Yeah. If you're allergic to alcohol, then there is um, not much that we can do. But again, what's your threshold? Because it's very, very little. Almost negligible. Isn't it's almost it? negligible. Yes. Yeah. As I said, it's on average about 1%, but most people, brewers, will probably get it even lower than that. It's very hard to produce something higher than 3% yeah. um, naturally through the SCOBY. Yeah. Um, if, you're, if you want higher alcohol content, you actually have to add in brewer's yeast. So it's very negligible. Um, yeah, personally I can't taste it. I always yeah. say that I'm very allergic to alcohol. I'm flushing red. You know, and, <laughs> but I, I don't have an issue with kombucha. I yeah. hardly even taste it. Mm. And if you, even if you didn't mention it, I, will, I didn't even know that the true exactly. fermentation process naturally yeah. secretes the alcohol. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, uh, it's it's a very interesting beverage and it's yep. been gaining in popularity over the Correct. past uh, several years, I would Correct. say. Yeah. And and even then, you know, people don't quite know what it is. Uh, mm. They just think it's its own subcategory. Even even I've forgotten what it is. I think you mentioned it's actually fermented tea, <laughs> right? Because yeah. you always see it uh, displayed in holistic fairs, yes. wellness yeah. festivals, yeah. Uh, and uh, it's it's just really a hip thing. To, to, to consume right now. Yeah, it's hip and trending, but did you yeah. know that the history of kombucha is more than a thousand years old? Oh wow, yeah. you learn something new every day, don't you? <laughs> exactly, it's yeah. a very long history and nobody really knows why it's called kombucha. That yeah. is how long it is. <laughs> yeah, I was watching you, you know, ferment it earlier and, yeah. the, and all your uh, containers and canisters. So yeah. it really is an art and a science. This whole, uh, whole process, a very lengthy process and very interesting, very fascinating. Could you run through quickly how it's actually made? Okay, so I already mentioned that there is a SCOBY, so that is the one that does most of the work. And what we brewers do is just to feed it and keep it alive and healthy. So what it feeds on is your tea and sugar. Plain and simple. What sort of tea, it really doesn't matter. I use black tea, green tea, I've experimented with white tea as well. But I know that the main components that what the SCOBY consumes would be the sugar, the tannins and the caffeine. So as long as I have two or three of all these 
and feeding the SCOBY, I'm fine. And that's where we experiment. So from start to finish, you are drinking the finished product, it takes about one week to reach this stage. Ah, so does it mean that, is it like wine, the longer you keep fermenting it or like kimchi, the better it is? Um, yes and no. Because unlike wine, it actually sits in a barrel and it takes mm. on the flavours of mm. the barrel and it goes through another slow ageing process and for, in that sense fermentation. So similarly to wine, yes, kombucha does go through a little bit of that fermentation process. If you just stick it alone like this in a bottle, it will continue because the bacteria is still growing and eating whatever sugars inside. Yeah. But it means that you will get a very sour brew the longer you keep it. And you may have a scoby forming inside as well. So some people find that gross because who wants to drink something that looks like brown, white, <laughs> moldy looking thing, right? <laughs> yeah, it looks gross at first. Mm. So um, yeah, most people don't brew it for such a long time. Mm. Or we chuck it into our fridge after what we call the second fermentation and it lasts about six to eight months in the fridge. I see, I see. So it's not indefinite, there is actually an expiry date to it. Yes, there is. I mean, even for kimchi, yeah. there is an expiry date. If you see mold growing on your kimchi, it means that you need toss to it away, toss it away. Yeah. So similarly, it's not forever because it's bacteria, it's still alive. It's a and, life culture. <laughs> yeah, and it clashes with other bacteria that's out in the atmosphere. Mm. So I was telling you about my cheeses, I had to chuck out all my cheese as well because mm -hmm. Yeah, the bacteria wasn't strong enough to withstand other bacteria that was in the atmosphere and it started to grow mold. Oh, gross. Yeah. Right. No, a lot of people, they drink kombucha on its own. They never think that you can actually go and pair very well with food. Yes. Right. Could you elaborate and tell us more? So, remember I was telling you that I treat my kombucha like alcohol mm -hmm. and I like to drink. <laughs> I also like to eat. <clears throat> So um, that's why when I was drinking my kombucha yeah. and I was thinking, you know, what can I pair it with? Because it's better to actually take your probiotics with food. Yeah, yeah. while so, you're eating, right? Yeah, correct, while you're correct. eating. Yeah. Or mm. you can actually drink half an hour before to open up um, your stomach because there are digestive enzymes inside as well. Mm. So um, but there's no hard and fast rule technically speaking. Yeah. So yeah, but one day I was drinking my ginger kombucha and I was eating something else and I realized that the taste just clashes. Blends. Blends or clashes? Clashes. Ooh, okay. So that's when I was thinking, oh I like this, I like that, but they just don't go. And then it was an aha moment for me because it's like, yeah, that's like wine, you know, when you have a glass of really good wine yes. and you drink it on its own, it's lovely, but when you pair it with the something, wrong thing. the wrong thing, mm -hmm. it clashes. But on yeah. the converse, if you pair it the right thing, the chemistry components exactly. merges like a marriage. Exactly. Right? Ah, okay. Yeah, so that's why I do monthly pairing sessions because mm -hmm. I want to show that, yes, this drink is lovely on its own and a lot of people do drink it on its own, but as I said, it's best taken with food. Mm. But if you take it with the wrong kinds of food, it's just going to taste strange, strange on the palate. It might even feel funny and queasy in the stomach as well, isn't it? Well, that's maybe the digestive <laughs> enzymes at work. Right? <laughs> you know, yeah. I actually, you know, for me personally, uh, I have a weak, very weak digestive system. It's my Achilles heel, ah. right? And I find oh, I always have... Uh, uh, slight heartburn and indigestion. So okay. kombucha really works very well for yes. me. It really does. Yeah. You know, because especially like what you mentioned, if I drink it mm. with my food or before food, yeah. I find that uh, you know uh, I have less issues. Yeah. Especially if I'm going to be eating spicy food or eating late at night, mm. man, that the indigestion will come. So yeah. but this will prevent it completely. Yeah, mm. and it also means that you need to take this regularly. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Oh my good gut health is it? Exactly, especially yeah. when you say you have indigestive problems, so yeah. Alright, I can't <laughs> wait. Can you run through this? You know, I want to I'll start tasting, I can already... You can smell it. Yeah, right. <laughs> you can smell it as well. Okay, so okay. Um, I have, as you can see, two, four, six flavours for mm -hmm. you to try. Mm -hmm. Six. Yes, yeah, six. That's why they're in shots, not glasses. Right. And normally when you go for wine pairing, they will start with the least flavorful and then we'll build up to the very strong mm -hmm. bold flavors. Mm -hmm. But for me, I like to do something a little bit opposite. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start with something very bold Robust. and very mm -hmm. strong. Then we will slide down to something that is completely different. 
and then we'll build up to something stronger. Okay, so, trust the expert, right? <laughs> this is all from trial and error. Okay. okay, so these two, I will suggest that you eat it with the samosa. Uh -huh. Okay, so I air fried the samosa, so it is very healthy, not very oily. Okay. But um, yeah, so half, okay? Half. So try it with the ginger and the red love. All right. Try the ginger first. The ginger first. So do I sip the kombucha or do I eat the food first? Up to you. Up to me, all right. Up to you. But most people want to sip yeah. it first. Yeah, uh, ginger is probably my favorite. Yeah, it is mm, most people's I love the smell. I like ginger as well because it tastes like ginger ale, right? Yeah, it tastes like ginger <laughs> ale. It really does, you know. Yeah. Mm. I mean, and ginger, you know, on its own is really very good for digestion, isn't it? Yeah. Right? It's okay, but no. Help myself to your... Beautiful samosa here. It's healthy, like you said, air fried. <laughs> That's why it's maybe a little oh, bit too. Yeah. It just bite on it. Bite just on bite. it. Okay. Yes, just bite. Um. Oh man, it's so tasty. Together mm. with the ginger, mm. trust me, it tastes better. Mmm. Mmm. It does adds to it. You know, right. it fuses. Yeah, very well. Mm. Yeah. Because in samosas, you've got your curries, you've got your cumin. I taste so, the cumin strongly, it merges with the ginger. Exactly, so that's mm. how it complements. Mm -hmm. Now this is what I call a rattler. Do you know what a rattler is? I was just going to ask you, what's a rattler? Try it, try okay. it. And it goes with the samosa. Here well. goes nothing. <laughs> yes. Hmm. It tastes, it tastes like sour plum. So it's kind of like... <laughs> Yeah, I think the closest thing I can think of is like a, 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 a tangy sour plum. A tangy sour plum. Yeah. What is it? <laughs> it is actually ginger with lemon. Ginger and lemon combined. Yeah. Alright. So th this sounds like, um, uh, you know, beer with, with lemon. That yeah, it's why it's called a rattler. Mm, okay. Because beer with lemony is called a rattler beer. Mm -hmm. So this is why it's called a rattler. Mm. So it does have a bit of a beer taste to it. Light. <laughs> it does. At the back of my throat, yeah. I do taste the beer. Yeah, but mm. there's no beer inside. Mm -hmm. So I like to call this the the halal beer, <laughs> Rattler. This this where the tanginess comes from. That zesty, yeah. you know. Now that you mentioned mm. lemon, you know. So yeah. yeah. Now it's all making sense. So right? wasn't that far? Sour plum, right? You were very <laughs> far. Okay, very <laughs> far. <laughs> Sour plus eleven, not in the same category. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sour something sour. Yeah. You know? So that's yeah. the that's the part I got right. My palate got right. Mm. <laughs> so now we're gonna cleanse your palate a little right. bit, and we're going into the fruits. Mm. Okay. So the next one is passion fruit. Passion fruit. Yeah. Definitely one of the more popular kombucha flavors, together with ginger. Yeah. Mhm. Mm but there are some of my um, clients who don't really like passion fruit. Because some, it's very weird. It's the same bottle that I'm pouring out from. Yeah. And some people find it too sour, some find it sweet, some find it just nice. To so, me, it's just nice. Exactly. Mm. I find it just nice mm. too. Yeah. yeah. And I like that very. It's very refreshing. Refreshing, yeah. Yes, yeah, definitely good for a palate cleanser. Yep. So that's why I'm letting you have that mm. after the yeah, ginger. Yeah, it reminds like, uh, like, like a very um, rejuvenating. Sorbet. Yeah. Real. And one thing I like about the passion mm. fruit is that it goes with a lot of other foods. Mm -hmm. So I like to pair it with cheese. You can have it with a bit of desserts as yeah. well. Yeah. Because especially if you have very, very sweet desserts, this will cut back on the sweetness. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Technically, it can be ice freeze, right? And it becomes like. Uh, yeah, you can make a, 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 a sorbet. A sorbet. Yeah. You could yeah. do, right? You with could the do it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But if you follow TCM and Ayurveda, they will tell you not to oh, take yes. so much. Oh yes, not to take cold stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is um, the the coldest I'll ever take it. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice chill. It's not cold. Yeah. You know, it's not like a shock to the system. It's not yeah. icy cold at all. It's just uh, like a very like gently chill. Yeah. Like like a white wine. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, so the next one is an experiment mm -hmm. because uh, peaches were in season, so I brought a whole punnet, mm. and you know it's too much to eat on your own. I made some into kombucha and the flavour is very mild because it's white peach. White peach, right. Yeah, so that's I love why. peaches. <laughs> Springtime. Mm. It tastes, if you think tail me is peach, I would think it's rose. It's a very 
uh, floral note to it. Oh yes, now I taste a peach at the back of my throat. Mm. It takes just that one second to, you know, yeah. for the, the palate to, to the start to register, send the signal to the brain. And, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, no, no I, I, I recognize that, set, that taste. Mm. Yeah. And because it's a nice mild flavor, you can enjoy it with something mild like this dark chocolate. Alright, so yeah. for something that really tastes very strong, like chocolate, you want a milder kombucha, is that it? In I general? personally prefer it. Mm. Yeah, but of course if you want to pair it with the passion fruit, go ahead because it's sharp and it is a direct contrast. Mm. But personally, I prefer something that's a bit milder and still complements. Mm. Yeah. Cheers! Are you all jealous that he's drinking so many flavors now? <laughs> Can you technically make any flavored kombucha? Um, that sounds a bit too Willy Wonka and <laughs> um, I would say I have experimented with a lot of flavors. Mm -hmm. Not every flavor works. works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of my students also ask me, uh, what about durian? <laughs> uh, that's an absolute no-no. No, no, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Yeah, I think certain things, certain ingredients might make it way too acidic as well. Not really. Right. Not really. It's really a very acidic. So if mm -hmm. you add extra acid, it's perfectly fine. Mm. So I've done it with like orange, grapefruit. It, it doesn't change the pH levels that drastically. Ah. How about your personal favorite? What's your personal favorite you flavor? Can't, you can't ask me that question. Too many. It's like asking me to choose <laughs> my favorite child. <laughs> No, you can't. Right. I have many favorites. Okay? Many favorites. So I've presented to you some of my favorites. Your own. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, what's next? Okay, so this is a popular flavor. Personally, I also do like it. Mm -hmm. As I said, one of my favorite kids, right? Mm -hmm. And it's banana. I've never seen it on sale before. Banana kombucha. I'm actually yes. excited to try it. Yeah. And it goes well with, with the, the chocolate. chocolate okay. as well. Yeah. Mm. You can just smell it. Yeah. It tastes like banana, like you know, <laughs> like banana flavored milk, but it's actually the kombucha version. Wow. Yeah. And you actually use real bananas in it. I you? use all real fruits mm. and whatever. Uh, yeah, I just use real fruits, real stuff in all my teas. It also has a re it's also reminiscent of banana bread. It has that, yeah. you know, the aftertaste. Oh. Because of the yeast. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what? When you say banana, I was like, uh, but it works! It, it really works. works! I'm surprised, yeah. I'm flabbergasted. Good job! Yeah, a lot of yeah. people did not expect that. I did not expect it, for sure. Yeah. But it works. You, it, it does. Like you said, you tried so many, right? Yeah. And some doesn't work. This one works, it really. <laughs> don't worry, I'm not going to give you things that don't work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right. the next one is Cheng Teng. Oh! Local flavor. How do you yeah. how do you distill that and you know crystallize it into the whole chain turn into uh, kombucha? Because chain turn is actually a lot of ingredients. Yeah, but essentially, mm. what are the main ingredients? The longan, the, the white longans. fungus. Yeah. So the ones that actually impart the flavors mm -hmm. would be the longans. Yeah. And some other secret ingredients that I'm not gonna tell Red you. Red dates, maybe. Red dates, yes, you yeah, guessed that right. Okay. Wolfberries, you can guess that right too. Yeah, goes nothing. My chain turn kombucha. Hmm. <laughs> It won't taste hundred percent like Chengdu for sure, but it's. It is. I can't quite make out what it is. It, it tastes very complex mm. and sophisticated. Mm. I can taste some kind of berries, all right, and, and the longans. Yeah. Uh, but I won't quite Cheng. You did tell me Cheng Teng. I won't really quite Cheng Teng. I, or something. I would say forest berries or something. But now that you mentioned Cheng Teng, it does have a hint of that flavor. You know. Yeah. It doesn't start like Cheng Teng, only like, like most, the, most of the kombuchas, it doesn't start there because it starts as that tangy, yeah. vinegar yeah. flavor and when it settles down, then do you, mm. do you sense and you recognize the, the subtle notes yeah. of the different uh, constituents, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Very experimental, it's very definitely unique. Do you All like right. it? I, I like it, I, I, I like everything. <laughs> it's hard not to like. I would say my personal favorite would be the the passion fruit, the banana, the ginger, yeah. So I tend to go for the sweeter, fruitier flavors, and the rattler and the the chingtung one tends to be more on the 
bitter, sour, you know, strong, mm. they're more robust. Mm. So um, I tend to like an intermediate to a lighter flavor. So, mm. uh, you know, ginger is the only robust one that I kind of like. Mm. But the rest, I, I tend to prefer it lighter. But this is my personal preference. You yeah, know? but three out of six, not bad. Yeah. 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 But I also notice you like something that's a bit less complex. Mm. Yeah, in terms of flavor profile. It's very obvious when I taste it, I can, yeah. you know, I can immediately recognize what it is. The, mm. For me, the banana is definitely a dark horse. I didn't expect it to work or taste good, but it really does, you know. Because mm. I'm not a fan of banana milk. Really? Yeah. Banana bread, yes, but not banana flavored milk. But this one is like, whoa, okay, I want banana kombucha. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Melissa, where can the audience go to to find out more, to attend one of your class, you know, mm. when, yeah, if they want to sign up? So if uh, you want to buy the kombucha from me or you also want to know about my classes and pairing sessions that I do every month, you can head on to my website kombucha.thewellnessinsider.sg Alright, I'll be placing all that info below in the video description, Pete. Please feel free to click on it and contact Melissa. Yep. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Luke. For, you know, sharing with us this. I can't wait to have you uh, come on to my talk show again on a different topic. Sure. Alright. So she's the wellness expert. <laughs> Alright, thank you guys for watching. Please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more similar videos. Alright, thanks. Bye.